World of Tanks. A tips and tricks guide to World of Tanks. Original. World of Tanks is a difficult game to get into, and if you've been playing it for a while, you know that it's even harder to get out of. So if you're here, it's probably too late for you. Anyway, I was going to make a super long video with over 100 tips, but I figured I'd split it into two because I'm lazy and because this video takes long enough to make as it is. This guide will be a random assortment of tips from controlling the vehicle to important battle tactics. I will try to elaborate on each point as I can, but keep in mind this is a beginner intermediate level tutorial. If you want me to go more in depth into particular topics in a future video, leave it down in the comments. I promise I will 100% read them all, seeing as I uh, only have like two to read. Uh, now quickly before I begin, because I hate long introductions to videos, to address a common concern from you, the viewer, uh, you might be thinking, Indoor, you're just a random guy on the internet. What gives you the right to give advice to other people? Well, imaginary viewer, I'm glad you asked. Good question. Turn in place to turn faster. I swear it'll get more complicated than this. Turn your turret in the same direction as the hole. This will make it so that you're not countering yourself because it pains me to watch people turn their turrets and their holes in the opposite directions of each other because it's just fighting yourself. Hold down right click to lock the turret in place so that you're able to look around without having to worry about the turret moving. This is useful for looking around corners and things like that. Using that last strategy you are able to hold down right click and keep your turret facing opponents at all times even while retreating so you can focus on driving. Uh, using that strategy I totally make it out of this situation alive. Nothing bad. Press X while in arty sniper mode to prevent rotation of the hull so you don't reset your aim. This also works in tank destroyers. If you're in a tank that's weak to getting flanked or you have run out of team support, try to get yourself into a position where you can limit the amount of places that the enemy team can approach you from. This will make it so that you're able to take shots every time you're getting hit, and it'll also allow you to easily predict exactly where they're going to be coming from because they don't have too many avenues that they can approach from. When doing less damage per shot than an opponent, you will usually, but not always, have a better reload time than your opponent. To take advantage of this, make sure that you are hitting them multiple times for each time that they are hitting you, so that you're able to maintain the trade. If you have a bigger gun than your opponent, however, it's better for you to hit one shot for each hit taken, and then pull back behind solid cover so that they can't return fire. Pretty much you want to keep them from being able to do what you were trying to do in the last trick. Use bush mechanics as often as you can. This is one of the more complicated things, but the gist of it is, when you're in a bush and you can see through it, when you fire, they'll be able to see you more easily. So what you want to do is look through the bush where you can see through it, then pull back to the point where in sniper view, the bush will become a bush again. And then when you fire, they will not be able to spot you most of the time. When you do fire directly through the bush, you are mitigating your camo, because when you fire, you are losing a camo bonus when you're not firing. So when you fire, you become easier to see. And then when you fire through a bush, you are losing that camo bonus that the bush is giving you, which again, makes it even easier to see you. No matter how much cover is between two vehicles, they will always spot each other when they get within 50 meters of one another. No matter how much distance there is between you and the bush you are using, a bush will always give you the same amount of camo bonus while firing while firing through it, as long as you are at the correct distance away where you can't see through the bush. So what I'm saying is line yourself up with bushes to give yourself that extra camo boost. It's a bit sad that I have to make this a clip, but don't kill yourself or make yourself useless to the team if you think you're going to lose early. Just because you got to remember that the other players on your team are still people. There's absolutely no reason for you to enter a game if you're just going to quit before it even starts. Please don't do that. Alright, back to the actual tips and tricks. When you are facing an opponent that is alone against two of you, then approach from different angles. It'll allow you to take shots at them without actually getting hit at all if you do it correctly. Especially if you're with a uh, platoon mate that you know well. You guys can take turns poking out in front of a larger tank and out trade it. When faced against a faster tank that you can't chase down, your best bet is to cap or use some other method that'll force the opponent to you. The only way that you're going to be able to kill them is if they come out in front of you, because you're not going to be able to follow, say, an EBR across the entire map. So by capping, you're forcing them to come to a location that you're able to control, and then by the time they get there, you're ready to counter. 
prioritize targets. Now this is a very complicated aspect of the game, and it's a little bit difficult to explain exactly which situations you would want to focus certain tanks in. But a good rule of thumb is you want to focus the tank that is the most dangerous to you. And being able to figure out which tank is going to be the most dangerous to you is important if you want to be able to survive a situation. So for example, in this situation, the tank destroyer I know can't hit me unless he turns his tank all the way around. So instead, I'm getting away from the tank destroyer while I have the chance and focusing on the medium tanks who are a bigger threat to me. At the start of a game, no matter what game mode you're in, read the enemy team list. And a thing that a lot of people skip over, read your team list as well. Take into stock what you have and then compare it to what they have and figure out who has the advantage on different parts of the map. If you figure that out prior to the actual get battle starting, you're able to pick a better position to start off at and therefore have a larger advantage against the enemy team. Excuse me as I use the exact same clip. This is also an important one. Don't push into a losing side. A lot of the time I see people trying to save a side that's already as good as lost. And all that is going to accomplish, you're not going to be able to save your teammate, but what you are going to do is die alongside them. So if you're able to, try to stay where you are. Find a defensible location so that you're able to hold off the enemy team's next assault. Going along with the last tip, if you are fast enough to escape a losing side, do it. If you see that you are with a definite disadvantage on a single flank, there is no reason for you to stay there when you can do a better job on, a, on another flank. So for example, I'm in a T-55A in this situation. I see that there is a lot of other tanks up here. And as soon as I figure out that I'm not going to be able to fight effectively on this side, I'm going to pull back and rotate to the other side. Remap keys that are difficult to get to in the control setting. For example, if you're driving an EBR and you want an easier way to go in and out of the speed mode, then you're going to want to switch to a, an easier key, such as a mouse key. If you want to specify whether or not you want to fire a salvo in a double barrel tank, set that to a different button. Be decisive. This can be for when you are losing a flank. For example, in the T-55A example from before, if I know that I'm going to lose the flank that I just left, then I'm going to want to be as aggressive as possible on the other flank so that I'm able to win that and then go back and counter the losing flank. Pressure weaker tanks. When you are, are able to catch out a tank out of position without support that is a weaker fighter than you, you want to make sure that you are keeping them from escaping, and if they do get, manage to escape, you want to be able to do as much damage as possible to them before they are able to get out. Whether this requires you to ram them or simply chase them down into a corner, you want to make sure that you're able to fight them as effectively as possible. When auto-aiming on a fast-moving tank, such as the incredibly elusive EBR-105, you want to make absolutely sure that you are auto-aiming and only firing once they drive either towards or away from you in a straight line. This will allow you to not have to worry about leading the shot and only have to worry about left-clicking when the time is right. Other tanks make effective cover, whether or not they be alive or dead in the battle. So when you are faced off against multiple opponents, try to use one of the opponents as cover from the other opponent to minimize the amount of tanks firing you at the same time. Obviously in this clip it didn't work out too well. When given a side shot on an enemy tank, always aim for the front and rear drive wheels. This will allow you to not only do damage to the tank, but also get a chance of tracking the enemy vehicle, which may force them to use a repair kit, or if they've used it already, it will allow you to easily pin them in place. Always use auto fire extinguishers and never regular fire extinguishers. This is because, even though auto fire extinguishers are 20,000 credits instead of the 3,000 of regular fire extinguishers, they only charge you for when they are used. And passively, they will constantly reduce the chance of you being set on fire by 10%, which will give you a bonus no matter what, and it will only charge you if you do get set on fire. And you get so many of them for free for just playing the game that you never have to worry about actually paying for your fire extinguishers. By default, R is to autopilot forwards and F is to autopilot backwards. To cancel either one, all you gotta do is press either W or S. The order of consumables has a lot of personal preference involved, but what I recommend is the med kit on four, the repair kit on five, and the fire extinguisher on six. This is because when you run the automatic fire extinguisher, you never have to reach over to six, so you don't have to worry about it. The med kit on four, if you press four four quickly, that'll get your driver back up in action, which is usually one of the most important things to escape a situation. And in the same way, five five will get you to repair the track. Camo bonuses work so that all tanks will get a camo bonus while you are remaining still. 
And all tanks will also gain a camo bonus when you are not firing. However, you will lose each of those camo bonuses when either you move or you fire. The only exception to this rule is a light tank. A light tank can keep their camo bonus while moving, but like all other vehicles, it will lose the camo bonus while it's firing. Most players gain a lot of extra directives from just playing the game over time. And uh, even more forget to use the directives that they earn. Directives may not be useful in every situation, but when you are trying to get that extra edge in a fight, or when, for example, you have a tank that really needs six sense, like a light tank or a tank destroyer that doesn't have six sense, use the six sense directive and you'll be all set. Turn on horizontal stabilization in your settings. This can be found in the general tab on the right hand side of settings. This pretty much means that when you are in sniper mode and you turn your vehicle from left to right, the place you are aiming at will remain transfixed. So you're able to approach an enemy vehicle and wiggle your armor or try to get to their side without having to worry about your gun going from side to side along with your tank. This is another opinionated change I like to make. Turn off grass density in settings. Grass density pretty much blocks you from being able to see through different areas because there is grass in the way. So it's a matter of cosmetics. Another settings trick, I see a lot of people prefer to use the percentage gauge on enemy health instead of the hit, hit points listed total. I would recommend using the hit points listed because it's easier to see whether or not, all right, this person is a one shot for me or this person is this badly damaged and I can kill them in this many shots. So whether or not you're able to win a fight can more easily be determined by seeing the exact health instead of seeing just a percentage. Activate view range circles in your settings. This is extremely important because it's going to allow you to see your view range, the maximum view range possible, so you can compare how far you have to stay to remain unspotted no matter what, and your render range, so what you can see from what other people spot for you. This is one of my absolute favorite tricks to use. When an enemy is pushing you over a ridgeline, track them just as they crest the ridgeline. This will allow you to keep them permatracked while their gun is still pointed in the air, and if they're not able to bring their gun down, they can't shoot back at you. So all you gotta do is just leave them like that and continuously fire into their drive wheel, which will keep them permatract and damage them, and then there's absolutely nothing they can do. You can make very skilled players look like absolute fools by doing this. Instead of double clicking to reload a shell overall, if you prep a shell to fire after your next shell, so if you tap the uh, shell that you want a single time, it'll prep the shell so that after you reload the next shell, it'll switch to that ammunition type. When circling opponent, you are more than welcome to auto-aim on the target, but keep in mind that certain tanks require you to aim in a specific place for you to be able to pen consistently. But when you are circling an opponent, make sure that you are tracking them as much as physically possible. If you are able to keep them pinned down so that only their turret is following you, you're going to be able to make slow tanks and even some semi-fast tanks like mediums look like idiots, especially if you're driving an EBR. When active spotting, only poke ridges with your turret. No matter how little you extend, as long as that part of your tank is over the ridge, you can see absolutely everything. However, your opponent won't be able to hit you because you're not giving him much of a target. When passive spotting, do not fire unless you absolutely have to. This means that if they get within range where they're going to automatically spot you very, very soon, and or you're going to be able to get a kill and manage to escape at the same time. However, it's almost always better to just not shoot. Shooting takes away your camo bonus from not firing and from remaining stationary, so as soon as you fire, your camo bonus is going to go way down, which will allow things to spot you much easier. Always position your tank so that you're ready to run at a moment's notice. This may include setting up completely backwards. This will allow you to get that speed boost moving forwards instead of having to pull backwards when you need to get out of the situation. Use spacebar to get a handbrake turn. Handbrake turns are extremely important, especially because of the last trick where you need to set yourself up backwards in certain situations. It's good to be able to use light tanks and spin yourself around into a bush instead of having to worry about completely rotating slowly. This works in fast vehicles, heavy tanks won't be able to use handbrake turns, but if you are getting enough momentum going, then it's a lot easier to stop that momentum and use it to turn your vehicle around. Press T on an enemy tank while in a regular tank to call attention to the target for your allies, but if you are in an artillery, press T on either an enemy tank or an area of the map to call out that that is the area that you are aiming at. 
This will allow you to focus fire in organized games such as clan events, and it'll also allow you to focus fire in just any sort of random battle, as long as your teammates are obviously paying attention. Use the view range circle on your minimap. Not only will it allow you to see how close you have to be in order to spot the typical enemy vehicle, but it'll also allow you to maintain a distance where no matter what kind of view range the enemy tank has, you will not get spotted by them. As long as you are outside the maximum view range circle, you are completely safe from being spotted, unless of course there is a hidden vehicle nearby. So that'll also tell you how close the enemy team is if you haven't managed to spot them yet. They have to be within that view range circle in order to see you. Auto aim is a very useful tool for most situations, but it is very important not to become too dependent upon it. Auto aim always focuses on the center mass of the enemy tank. That won't help you for leading a shot and it won't help you for aiming for weak spots. So the only, ch the only time when you should be using auto aim is when you are fighting a tank that is guaranteed easy to pen and you need to focus on your driving. Don't shoot HE or heat into space armor. The easiest example of spaced armor is on any vehicle, which is the tracks. The tracks don't actually count as the armor profile, so if you hit an enemy vehicle's tracks, you are not actually hitting their whole armor, which is the only way to damage them. So you want to aim for anything besides the tracks. A good rule of thumb to maximize damage with an HE shell when you know that you're not going to be able to pen the target is to aim for either the thinnest armor possible or the central mass of the target. So a good rule of thumb is try to aim for the turret ring. That'll maximize crew damage and it'll try to and it'll splash outwards, which will hit not only the hull but also the turret. The only time you should be firing HE out of a low caliber gun is well, pretty much never. HE does damage depending upon the caliber of the gun if it doesn't pen. So the larger the shell, the more damage you'll do. But when your shell is very small, even if you're firing at a tank that's got absolutely no armor, you're almost always better off to just fire AP anyway. If an opponent is a one-shot for you, no matter whether or not you fire AP or HE, just fire AP. Because HE is very unreliable, AP will be able to penetrate more consistently and it will do an even amount of damage consistently. So if the guy's a one-shot either way, don't bother loading HE. The only exception to this rule is if the enemy tank is a very well-armored tank and at extremely low health. If you're firing out of a high caliber gun, it's actually easier to take him out with HE in that case. This ties into prioritizing. When you are outnumbered, always focus the low hit points and the fastest enemy tanks. Those are the tanks that are going to be the most dangerous to you, no matter what tank you are in. When you're trying to carry a match, always kill the arty first. Arty is the most unreliable and RNG-related class in the game, and when you're trying to carry a game, it can be very painful if Artie is continuously pounding on you, especially when it's such an easy tank to kill if you can get to him. And again, as we all know, Artie prevents camping. When approaching an enemy tank, try to wiggle your tank as much as possible from side to side to maximize the chance of bouncing. When facing an opponent in a mobile tank, especially when they're capping, try to keep them guessing by coming up at different locations. So once you go unspotted, make sure you relocate to a different location. It even helps if you try faking out going one way, and then go the opposite direction after you go unspotted. Use the website tanks.gg, which I will link in the description, to figure out the armor profiles of certain tanks and to figure out the penetration values of certain other tanks, and also to compare them amongst each other. What is your chance of penning a certain angle? This will help you in uh, overall battles if you're able to remember for specific tanks. This is more of an overall tip. Predict the flow of battle. This will go along with if you're losing a flank, you have to respond by pushing or holding that flank, and it will also go along with reading the team list. All those things together will allow you to predict the flow of battle. By putting yourself into position before it occurs, where you're going to be able to do the most damage in that specific vehicle, you're going to be able to get the most out of your game. Use terrain to maximize your armor. This could be as much as angling up a hill to increase the angling of the armor itself in order to get as many bounces as possible, and it could also be hiding your lower plate, which is a weakness of most tanks, and only exposing your turret. You want to make sure that you're using the terrain to your advantage while minimizing the amount of effects it'll have while you're shooting the opponent. While moving around in any vehicle, including when you are pushing or trying to retreat, use terrain and everything around the map as much as possible to minimize the amount of guns that are able to hit you. So if you're pushing and uh, an enemy tank is aiming at you from around a 
corner, try to get as close as possible to around the corner so that they can't hit you. If you are pushing up at a tank on a hill, try to get below their gun line. When repairing stun with a medkit, you only want to do it when you are going to lose health directly as a result to the stun. Because even though you have a 90 second cooldown on the medkit, so you are technically able to use it again, it is a little bit of a risk that within those 90 seconds you might need to use that medkit for something more important than just the stun. If you get to choose between taking a single hit from a big gun and a single hit from a smaller gun, choose the smaller gun. Meaning that if you have to drive around a corner and either take a hit from the big gun or the small gun, try to take the hit from the big gun. <laughs> Not the big gun, the small gun. Use terrain to expose as little of yourself as possible to an opponent. This could be, as I said before, by using hills and stuff like that, but it's also so that if you're poking around a corner, shoot the tank that's easiest to shoot. Don't expose as more than you need to to shoot something on the inside when you could shoot something on the outside just as easily. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? 